I have some really exciting news. The Teardrop Camper is finally finished. Hey everyone, welcome. Today I'm gonna to be giving a full tour of the Teardrop trailer, talk about how our first camping trip with it went, and touch on what we liked and what we'd like to upgrade or change in the future. If you're interested in a more detailed and step-by-step -step breakdown of how we built the Teardrop trailer, I have another video that I will link below. If you watch my other videos, you know that my husband, Kyle, myself, and my dad have been working on this camper over the last two years that we built from the ground up. My dad has decades of woodworking and a decent amount of MIG welding experience, so he's been leading the charge on this project. Kyle and I have a bit of experience in those areas, but we have been learning a lot as we go and have definitely come away with a lot more experience and confidence. And I would say this project is what really ignited my excitement for getting more into woodworking and metalworking. Once we got the camper to a place where it was road ready and able to be registered, we took it on a short test trip to visit some friends in Southern California. But we still needed to build out the kitchen galley area and finish up a couple of other details. Over the past couple of months, we've been building out the back area. I sketched out how it would look and where we'd have cabinets and storage sit on the inside of the cabin and on the outside in the kitchen area. I have to give my dad the biggest shout out because he really did the majority of the work on this part of the build. He built out the plywood cabinets and came up with the storage lock and cooler drawer system. Since we have a camping trip on the calendar, I thought it would be a perfect time to give a full tour and share our thoughts on the final product. Here's a quick look at the camper. The main cabin inside has three cubbies, one with a door and two open for storage of clothes and toiletries, a fan above for cooling and a giant window with a sunshade to keep the heat out. We also have book lights with USB charging ports on each side of the bed, as well as main lights overhead. In the back, we have our kitchen and additional storage. This includes a drawer that slides in and out to allow access to a cooler and another drawer that slides in and out to allow us access to the electrical system. The exterior is a mix of aluminum and quarter sawn sapelli veneer over marine grade plywood. For our first trip, we drove to a campground at Folsom Lake, which is a beautiful recreation area outside of Auburn, California. In previous years, the lake has been really low due to California's droughts, but because we've had an unprecedented amount of rain in the past year, it is full to the brim. The road to get there is rather windy and was steep in some parts, but the trailer handled it really well, even while being pulled by our little Subaru Crosstrek. Our campsite had a gorgeous view of the lake, and we got there just in time for a beautiful sunset. We got settled in and hung out for a little bit with the galley lights on before heading to bed. The cabin holds a queen-size mattress, which is plenty of space for Kyle and I, but we brought our dog Augie, and it was a little cozy because he likes to really sprawl out. So this is the main cabin. Decent amount of space for us to sleep. There's already some hair from Augie on the blanket, but I tried to clean it off a little bit. Up here we have storage, and so decent amount of room for bags and clothing. And then we have these nice little handy locks that come out, a bunch of more clothing in there. We already have one issue with this um, hinge coming undone. With our electrical system, we included an outlet on the inside of the cabin and in the back on top of the cabinets. 
Now I'll give you a little breakdown of our kitchen galley area in the back camper. As I mentioned previously, we have some lights back here that are connected to a dimmer switch, which is really nice in the evening, depending how dark it is, we can adjust the brightness. On the bottom is where our battery, inverter, solar controller, fuse box, emergency power shutoff, and the smart shunt sit. We secured the battery and inverter to a drawer that slides in and out and locks into place when pushed in. This is covered by a door that has a vent to allow airflow to help keep the inverter cool. Up top, we have cabinets that open from the bottom. We did this just in case stuff shifts or falls over in transit. It won't all come spilling out as soon as you open the cabinet. It was plenty of space to store all of our kitchen stuff as well as additional camping essentials and a pantry area for all of our unrefrigerated food. You'll notice all the doors have these really nifty little pull locks that I definitely recommend as they're perfect for keeping these cabinets secure and really easy to open and close. And of course in the middle we have the cooler drawer that locked into place and could slide in and out so we could easily grab food from it. Above the cabinets there was a nice little flat spot that we could set up things while we were parked and we had a nice stainless steel countertop for cooking on. We chose the stainless steel because it will hold up a lot to wear and tear and cleans really easily. We thought about including a stovetop integrated into the countertop and a sink, but we felt like it would take up too much counter space. And honestly, it wasn't something that fit our needs for the teardrop. Overall, our kitchen is pretty simple, but it has a lot of storage space for all of our plates and food, and it's just a really great area to prepare meals or even set up a laptop and work from if we wanna try working remotely for a day. After breakfast, we explored the area. There's this really nice trail that we were able to walk to from our campsite that goes along the lake's edge, and we took Augie on a walk along it for a bit. After lunch, the other couple we were camping with watched the pup while we took the paddle boards out on the lake. It was so nice to be able to come back after a long day in the heat to our little teardrop. It was a high of about 90 degrees that day and I was really amazed how quickly the teardrop cooled down once we opened the doors and let the fan run for a bit. It made me very thankful that we took the time to put in proper insulation when we built it out. For our last evening there, we were rewarded with a beautiful sunset, which just really summed up how the whole weekend went. So today is Monday. We just got back from the camping trip at Folsom Lake yesterday afternoon. Overall, the weekend was really incredible. The camper far exceeded my expectations and how it was gonna go with the first trip. It was so nice to just be able to get up and immediately jump in the back and have everything ready to go and easy to access to start preparing food and just hang out. When the hatchback door was up, it created a really nice shaded area. So even as it started getting hot, we just set up our chairs out underneath the hatchback door and it was a really cool area to chill out. The main positive takeaways I have from that weekend were how nice in general the teardrop was to have when the weather is warmer. The insulation did a really good job of keeping the heat out for a really long time. And then when it did eventually get into the main cabin, opening the doors and having the fan running, it cooled down really quickly. And I was even able to take a nap at around 5 p.m. when it was still in the high 80s. And that just wouldn't happen if we were in a tent. 
I didn't really feel like we needed additional storage in the back area for food. I thought it was perfect. And a big one for myself, and I know it's a big one for Kyle as well, was the quality of sleep we got. It was a huge improvement from the kind of sleep we typically get camping. I think that's the biggest drawback I've always had camping is I just cannot sleep in a tent. I've tried a million different air mattresses and pads and sleeping bags. I just toss and turn too much and it doesn't work for me. So I end up being miserable all night, which is such a bummer because I love everything about camping except the fact that I can't sleep at all. And this past weekend, I slept almost completely through the night. The only time I really woke up was when Augie kicked me, but I went right back to sleep and the mattress was really nice to have. There were definitely some things that myself and Kyle noticed that we'd want to improve or build upon. One of them being the storage inside the cabin. We just felt like the three cubbies filled up really quickly. And while it was enough space for the clothing we had for a short weekend trip, if we did anything longer than that, it would have been way too small. So Kyle's idea is to add an additional longer cubby underneath or a cabinet space. My idea is to do some kind of stretch netting underneath the three cubbies that will expand as we put clothes in and contract whenever they're empty. Let me know in the comments which one you think we should do because me and Kyle can't decide. Additionally, Kyle and I both agree that we need to have some sort of pocket or maybe a little shelf on either side of the cabin walls by the book lights. It would just be nice to have a place to put small items like a phone, keys, or earplugs so that they don't get lost. One thing that myself, Kyle, and my dad really wanna do is add on one to two bike racks. We're all big into mountain biking and in the future, we definitely wanna do some camping trips where it's easy to bring our mountain bikes. We have a couple ideas of how we're gonna do that, but we still need to figure out exactly which direction we're gonna go with. Those are our main takeaways from this first camping trip with the mostly finished teardrop camper. I'm so happy that we decided to take on this wild project two years ago and it'll be something that myself, Kyle, and my parents will enjoy for many years to come. I hope you found this interesting or helpful if you are working on your own camper and let me know if you have any questions or thoughts below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.